you talk a lot about having a powerful vision and how necessary mm -hmm. that is for success. So I'm thinking of you here on your sister's couch. What, what did that vision look like? Pay my own rent. That was the first vision. And I think a lot of people, especially entrepreneurs, get caught up in these big ideas or big visions when they're in a small place to start and when they feel like it's too unattainable. And so I always talk about starting with something simple. And so for me, the next step was to get off the couch and feel like I was an adult. Right. I would write out my own itinerary every day. How much time am I gonna work towards my health? When is that time? When am I allocating it towards? How much time am I working towards reaching out to mentors, to learning new information, to traveling to events, to consuming books, whatever it may be. And some people may say that's a little crazy or a little uh, too much. Right. If you want to achieve those results, you've got to be very intentional about every moment. The more focused, the, the easier the opportunity to achieve. Doing something, you should believe in it with your heart. Yeah. And just the only way you can do that is to know who you are. And But once you know who you are, how you want to work, how you want to spend that part of your life for work, and, uh, and then you just go do it. You start every day and you learn stuff as you go. And that's the thing. So, you know, the, the advice is, you know, maybe it's some of the things I've already said, like if you know yourself, then you know, you can start to build a vision for what you want to become and what you want to do with your life. How do you prepare somebody to survive that initial stage of boredom and pain? Well. Pain is great. You've got to embrace pain. Pain is pleasure. You've got to make the connection between the physical and the mental. When you work out, it's painful. Um, I, uh, um, I do long distance swimming is like my main workout. I also do other things, but that's my main workout. I'm, I'm on like mile one and I'm like, God, man, I'm gonna, this is fun. I'm so bored and it's so, I'm really gonna collapse. But when I'm finished, I am like, oh man, I've got so much energy and it feels so good and I pushed past it. Well, you know that when you're exercising, when you're running or you're working out or whatever, it hurts, but it leads to something pleasurable. You have to be able to translate that to mental things. And if you make that, that switch in your mind, it is mind blowing what can happen to you. If, if the boredom of learning something technical and you're able to say to yourself, wow, I'm going to master this bit of coding um, after a few months and just think of what it's going to allow me to do. Okay, so the boredom now is actually not so bad because I can imagine the powers that it's going to lead to. I'm not going to skip the steps. I'm still going to learn, but I'm thinking of all of that, that post-workout feeling I'm going to have. You've got to be able to understand, embrace pain. Pain is something to embrace. If there's no resistance to you, you're, you're not going to get anywhere in life. Who, who are the most messed up people in the world? Spoiled kids. Kids who are given everything, who have a rich father or mother and they don't have to work or try. They are the most messed up people you'll ever meet. All right, you're writing a book on human nature. Why is that true? Because they have no limits, they have no resistance. They don't have to push against anything. They don't have to go like that Does to that get somewhere. Does that atrophy something in the brain, do you think? That well, I, it's one of the laws of human nature. The, one of the laws is about what I call necessity. We are animals of necessity. When we have to discover or build something, we build it if our life is on the line. That's how we were, that's how we're genetically primed from several million years ago. And when there's no necessity, when we don't have to do something, we just lie around and watch television and smoke pot. You can have any habit you want of it. You can be, you can be lazy, you can be prompt, you can be, you can be late, you can be honest, you can cut corners. I mean, you have all these choices. And those are choices for you to make. Nobody else is gonna make them for you. And I would suggest that you play this little game with me too. Uh, think about the person you would most like to be in life. So maybe it's one of your contemporaries, maybe it's somebody a little older, but pick out the person you admire the most, the person that you'd change places with if you could. And then write down why you admire them. Just put it on a piece of paper. And then figure out the person that you would least like to change places with you. Who really turns you off? Who do you find repulsive? And list the reasons why that person turns you off so much. And put those down on the other side of the paper. And then look at that list. 
And you'll find that everything on the left-hand side, what you admire in other people, the qualities they bring to life, um, cheerfulness, you know, generosity, all kinds of things, you'll find those are things you can do yourself. It's very simple. You gotta apply yourself, but the habits you form in doing that early on will carry you through life. And on the other hand, you'll find that the things that make people repulsive, selfishness, obnoxiousness, all these things, egotism, are things that no one has to have. If you find those in yourself, you can get rid of them as long as you get rid of them early. So all I suggest is that you write, you write down a list of what, what you admire, what you find uh, contemptible, and decide that you know, the ones on the, on the ad, ad, admired side are, are ones you're gonna acquire for yourself. And if you do that when you're young, it'll carry you through the rest of your life. This doesn't work if you do it when you're 50 or 60. By then the habits are too well formed. Uh, but if you do it early, behavior becomes, becomes a habit. So if you do that two or three years from now, if you go through the same exercise, you'll find out that the person you admire the most is yourself. That can be a little dangerous under some circumstances, but it, uh, uh, but it's not a, it's not a bad thing. I mean, you want to be somebody you like, and you don't want to be somebody that you're, that you dislike and, and, uh, form those habits early. It, you basically can't miss. In your bias right now, you're thinking, okay, if I get what I want, then I'm gonna be happy. And what I'm showing you is that that's true. And any fucking asshole who tells you, you shouldn't work hard, you shouldn't be competitive, you shouldn't go for what you want, you shouldn't fucking crush it financially in your relationships, in your health, in your goals and get what you want. You should just be happy now and just don't worry about that stuff. Don't be attached. Any fucking asshole that tells you that, just look at them. You don't have to say it out loud, but in your mind, just say, go fuck yourself, okay? Because they're leading you down a path that's not there to serve you. They're trying to lead you into their group think to rationalize their own beliefs. But likewise, also realize that there's another way of looking at things where you could train yourself to have gratitude right now. You could train yourself to laugh right now. You could train yourself to be present to the moment right now. You could discover that when you think less and allow a space in the thinking so that you can get presence, a lot of genius and brilliance and spontaneity and awareness will come to you naturally. You may even discover that you've been getting in your own way. You may discover that you've been making yourself more tired and miserable than you have to be. You may discover that your most natural state is that of joy and that a lot of modern society, consumer culture, and ego fulfillment has robbed you of a naturally happy state that you could have spent the last several years of your life in the fucking zone, super happy, and then instead you've been chasing phantoms. You may discover that too. Part of us always knows that we're just a doctor's visit away or a phone call away from being starkly reminded with, with the fact of our own mortality or of those closest to us. Now, I'm sure many of you in this room have experienced this in some form. You, you, you must know how uncanny it is to suddenly be, be thrown out of the normal course of your life and just be given the, the full-time job of not dying or caring for someone who is. But the, the one thing people tend to realize at moments like this is that they wasted a lot of time when life was normal. And it's, not just what they, it's not just what they did with their time. It's not just that they spent too much time working or, or compulsively checking email. It's, it's that they, they cared about the wrong things. They, they regret what they cared about. Their, their attention was bound up in petty concerns a year after year when life was normal. And this is a paradox, of course, because we all know this epiphany is coming. But don't you know this is coming? Don't you know that there's going to come a day when you'll be sick or someone close to you will die and you'll look back on the kinds of things that captured your attention and you'll think, what, what was I doing? You know this, and yet, if you're like most people, you will spend most of your time in life tacitly presuming you'll live forever. 
I mean, it's like watching a bad movie for the fourth time. Yeah. Or, or bickering with your spouse. I mean, this, these things only make sense in light of eternity. <laughs>